a country lane in South Lottershire was sort of almost contre jour against the light. I think quite a simple scene. We've got the lane here, a little narrow country road going or just taking a slight dip and then going up, up um, the hill in the distance. And a couple of medium sized trees on the left hand side casting a shadow across the, the lane and the sun's just beginning to come out and there's a car coming up now just ignore that and then in the foreground overhanging on the left hand side a nice looks like a beech tree or something that's creating a nice bit of framing on the left hand side and it sort of comes down into the bottom left hand corner uh, field over to the right med general sort of meadow and soft soft shadows going across the field with the clouds going across the sky yeah a nice scene to be had let's see how we get on Right, first of all, get the drawing right and the overall composition. So Lane is coming down downhill a little bit and then it sort of goes up to the top of the hill and right hand side Some frothy growth of grasses. Left hand side there's this first medium sized tree and then a little bit further up another one. Ridge of the hill I think I'm going to sneeze. Ah. Now, right hand side of the lane, you can just see the tops of a few trees and then the hill slopes away and then right hand side there's another one coming in. right hand side of the road there's these grasses coming around to the right um, tree coming in from the left foliage in the bottom left corner and shadows we're, we're sort of looking into the light but it's a little bit to the left dotted around in that field. You might be able to just hear them in the background. Base of the the hedge on the on the right hand side the shadow increasing shadow as we come up to the right
Good. Let's start painting. Excuse the noise of the cars. I think it's a busy little rat run. The, the nearest village is Leighton and it's just down this path here. Maybe it's collecting time or something. Right. Simple sky. Just a few. Little clouds. Wet the paper and then just drop in a little bit of greyish paint for the underneath of the clouds and now for some sky, a little bit of cerulean and a cobalt blue. I think mainly cerulean. It's too dark. A bit more cerulean. They are nothing too fussy. And then this lane, a little bit of blue, a little bit of red. That's cadmium red, yellow ochre, cobalt blue, neutral tint, burnt sienna, cerulean blue. There's a cadmium yellow down there, which is from my previous painting has uh, been well and truly, been well and truly contaminated. Uh, right, this road, a bit of burnt sienna. It's got to be quite light. It's actually one of the lightest parts of the overall composition. And it's light at the sides and then a little bit darker up the middle. Let's mop that up a little bit. And number eight, synthetic brush, just get the let's get a little dark line up the middle. Something quite dry. And Paint still, paper still quite damp. And make this line a little bit thicker as we come towards us. There. Now, 
sky should have dried. Let's get in the grass. The, the fields are a darker value than the sky. And I don't want the, there's a fairly hard edge on the skyline. So I don't want to go into it. I want to make sure this is a little bit dry. It's a tiny bit damp there, but it's okay over there. Uh, right. Well, the colour. I know the valley, valley's darker than the sky, but the colour, yes, it's green, but there's a little bit of, with the, with the heads of the, the wheat or the, the, the grasses, the flower heads there, they've got that sort of yellow ochreish tinge to them. So a little bit of green. A little bit of green. And then a touch of yellow ochre here and there. I need to get hard edge and then the meadow on the left disappears behind a tree and then reappears. So there's, there's some flower heads just below that, that tree there. Then the grass goes a lot greener. And to cover up the paper down there. That, that will be dark shade down there. Right, other side. And just to really cover up the that, that right hand side, I just continue down with this general theme of green for now. And there are some soft shadows being being cast across the field. So let's get those in while this is fairly damp. Like that. Right, there's a few little tracks. Just 
through the grass. Background hills. Start on the right hand side. So it's darker, not too green, otherwise that's going to bring it too far forwards. But darker. So the, there's some trees there and then they disappear and then there's just a little clump that reappears about there. Right, left hand side now. Something a bit darker, bit bit thicker. And starting from the the back and work my way forwards. get in some hedgerow here. Next tree coming down the lane on the left hand side, that bigger tree. And it's a sort of similar height. So I'm just sort of stabbing the paper and trying to create that, that foliage effect of, of the, the tree shape and the leaves on the outside. Not too watery with the 
not too watery with the consistency. And then a lot darker on the right hand side. Shadow there. A bit of shadow. Up the side of the road. Use my fingers just to lift it off in places. up some of those little bits of paper showing through. No, right on the side. and the hedgerow a bit of shadow underneath the clumps of grass where they hit the road so with a small synthetic create those shadows, fairly thick paint, just flicking it up. Just here and there on the other side, there's a little bit of darker, darker um, plants, nettles and wildflowers on that side.
couple of dark shadows across the road. So a red and a blue. And there's, there's one there. And it goes up the other side just a little bit and then a thicker one there. Up the other side. And then this bigger tree. So a larger shadow for that one. Okay, um, tree in the top left corner. Use a sword brush for this. And neutral tint, a little bit of cadmium yellow, get a, get a very dark, intense green, and then with that saw brush, creating those, oops, creating those leaf shapes. That top left corner. Going across the bigger tree and maybe some little twigs. Connecting some of those leaves. And then over the over the meadow, top of the meadow. Try and be fairly random with it. And now bottom, bottom left corner, I'm gonna use my long synthetic round. Not so dark as the tree in the top left corner. Oops, not so dark. So a blue, my cobalt blue. Cadmium yellow. Continue down to the down to the side of the road and then different colour for the shadow. So red, blue.
Right, next. This needs to be tended to. It's not quite right yet. Um, we're getting there. A smaller brush. Smaller brush and... Get in just a slightly darker... Slightly darker foliage in places just to indicate those clumps. bit of gravel and debris at the side of the road, maybe just a little bit down the middle. Add a little bit of definition to these shadows on the right hand side. And the shadows are underneath the clumps of grass, but they come out into the road in, in places. Could be a rock or something. That could be there is a stone wall on the right hand side and a, a post there. There's a, a little gate on the right hand side as well that can connect the left hand shadows with that bush. Just a hint of the gate. Okay, uh, right, pull it together with some. I need to try and define some of these, these uh, grass heads, these flower heads of the grasses with my rigger brush and a little bit of white paint. So, A little bit of white paint. I'll mix it with a tiny bit of yellow ochre. And there's some 
and grass is there. There's lots of grasses on this side. Top of those rails. Right, a bit more definition to the shadows, bottom left corner, and then I think we are done. have a little bit of the silhouette of some of the hogweed or bishop's weed that is coming out from the left hand side. Maybe I do need to put in a few, a few of these sheep, seeing as they're making so much noise. Uh, sheep, let's put in a few white blobs.
few little white blobs. And then something dark behind them. A little bit of shadow. There we are, some sheep. I might just put a few little long, long grasses on the right hand side with this rigor brush. Country Lane in South Gloucestershire, the road to Laterton. That's probably what I call it, the road to Laterton. Yeah, I'll get back to the studio and then do a proper critique. And I'm going to blow my nose. <laughs> Speak to you shortly. Back in the studio now, back indoors and away from the distractions of the sheep and the cars. I didn't quite imagine how busy that row was. I thought it was a very quiet row when I, when I parked up. I thought it was a very peaceful scene. Didn't really mind the sheep, but the cars, they, it was getting quite busy. Anyway, back indoors. And a chance just to review the painting and maybe on this occasion something that I I wouldn't normally do but touch up a painting that I've done before uh, just little bits and pieces that uh, are on my mind I don't normally do it I, I personally I just like doing a painting all in one I'm not one of those people that can start a painting then finish go off and do some other project then come back to it some later time date and do more to it I just can't do it but on this one there were a couple of things that were on my mind first of all those soft shadows of the clouds going they were sort of following the the contour of that little bit of a dip there and I omitted to put them on the left hand side so that was on my mind I thought well there's a cloud there there's a, there's the shadow of a cloud there but really maybe it could continue over on the left hand side of the road and the other thing was maybe just a little bit more effect to the grasses in the in the hedgerows. Just those two things, not too much, because I'm quite happy with certain aspects of it, like that bush there. I think that, that's quite nice, and the, the outer edge of that, that sort of looks okay. And the the overall composition, those two, those two uh, medium-sized trees on the left-hand side of the lane, the, the foliage cover on the left-hand side. Anyway, soft shadows. So what I'm going to do is pre-wet the paper with some clear water and a very soft brush. I don't want to damage the painting surface below. So clear water and thinking about where these shadows are going to be. I don't want too much water on my brush. Um, so maybe just a little bit in there. And then maybe a tiny bit on the top of that hill there. So just pre-wetting the paper so I can get a soft edge. And where there's just a little bit too much water, I can just... 
you see that's the danger. I've gone up to that, that dark a bit there and it's starting to blend in. And in a way, I'm getting, I'm getting a bit of a soft shadow over there anyway. So let's just encourage that a little bit. Right, back over here, that sort of bluish shadow. So let's pick up something from my palette. Same brush, this soft squirrel mop. And the surface of the, the paper is still damp. I can just see a little bit of a, a glisten if I look at it against the light. And then just a little bit of, of that. Hopefully it's a similar color value to the shadow down there on the right hand side. Just a little bit and maybe for good measure, we'll do a bit over there. All right, so more of a continuous line of shadows. Next, the grasses. Um, I'm quite happy with these lights and darks. Looking at the, uh, I've got a photo of the, um, of the scene, which I took before departing. And maybe there could be just a little bit more shadow underneath the, the, the mounds of grasses on that right hand side. So something fairly dark, a, a dark green for me is a yellow, is cadmium yellow and a bit of the, I don't mind mixing them in the, in the actual paint wells. Sometimes I could mix over there, but this is all right. So a dark green, maybe a little bit of blue in there as well and fairly thick. And then just tease, tease up some brush strokes, starting from the, the road level and then just create a little bit more shadow below those grasses. Because on the, on the source photo, on my photograph I took, this shadow extends, it's a continuous shadow. And maybe there's just a little bit of shadow further up. It's a bit more over there where the brick wall, where the stone wall was. Go a little bit darker. A little bit of cobalt blue. And keep that white bit there, it's quite nice. Don't know what it is, but maybe it was the top of a stone or something like that. There was a top of a stone there. Not too much, I don't want to endanger overdoing things or ruining the, the, the freshness of, of the plain air. Maybe there's a bit over there as well. And I think the shadow on the road is okay. Now, just to finish up, maybe a few more little strands, rogue strands of grasses um, popping up their heads above the, the, uh, the overall clumps there. And I'm going to use a, a Lebensen rigger brush for this, very fine brush. And let's, so I've, I've got down here my palette, um, you probably can't see, but I've got a, a bit of mixture of um, white and a little bit of, sorry, white gouache and a little bit of yellow ochre. It's quite nice for doing grasses. And if, if, if it's too white, I could just pick up a little bit of yellow ochre. 
and then just try and replicate these little seed heads just a little bit more in there. Random, have a bit of fun with the direction of the brush and where I'm going and maybe there's a few little few little flat flower heads there as well. And a few more on the right hand side, um, particularly where we have little strands of grasses going over the the darker areas, the, the shadows. So just a few. Maybe it could be could be a little bit more of the yellow ochre. So I've got my white gouache, a bit of yellow ochre, just a few more. So very, very thin lines, and then so a thin line, and then maybe a little bit of a blob on top for the flower head. There, I think that's a little bit better. Perhaps a few more over here. Don't want to ruin this bit, but <laughs> I thought that was quite nice, this bit. But they do, they do sort of stand out a little bit more when you've got that dark, when you've got that dark background there. Yeah, so I think I'm a bit happy with that. That sort of turned out all right. As I said, there's a great danger for me anyway, that I totally ruined things after, totally ruined things after coming back to a painting a second time. I generally tend to try and do it all in one. And if in my little critique of myself, little review, if I thought something was not quite right, then I try and rather than change it, I try and maybe do a similar scene, um, but <laughs> try and remember where I went wrong and then, um, don't do that. Uh, don't do that mistake again. There could be a little bit more to it. I could I could add a bit more detail to the row. Maybe some some little um, little dots of uh, paint for the little stones and chippings in the on the road surface there. But on the whole, I'm generally happy with that. I'm glad I got the sheep in. <laughs> they were quite a feature of the day. Um, hopefully, they didn't detract from the quality of the uh, the video or the audio um, with those sheep in the background, but it was very authentic. They were or over there on that right-hand side. They were the bulls on the left-hand side and the sheep on, and the goats as well on the right-hand side. So a lovely country scene, a peaceful, a fairly peaceful place to paint. The road to Laterton Village, way over there. Hope you liked it. Catch up with you on the next video.